Hello, I am Dr. Mehul Sheta from Siusha Medical College, Surendragar, that is in India. Uh, I am going to tell you on microscopy. Uh, we will discuss on the definition, history part, different types of microscope definitions, means physics. The microscope is a physics, so there will be different physics definition, working principle of microscope, parts of microscope and their function, objective, then how to maintain and care to be taken for microscope. First definition of microscope. If uh, we define the microscope, it is an optical instrument that uses a lens, single lens or a combination of lens to produce magnified image of a small object especially the objects which are too small to see by naked eyes that is microscope history the dutch spectacle maker that is jacaris jensen had made first microscope with a magnification power of 10 times in 1590 then robert hook made micrographia in 1665 then comes this anthony horn liu and walk who made the microscope with a magnification power of 300 times in 1674 and he demonstrated the shape of the microorganism and their movements like a figure this A is showing a rod shape bacilli this is showing the movement of organism from the C point to the D point it is showing a kokai round shape it is somewhat spiral bacilli like that he tried to demonstrate different shape and movement of the organism then in 1931 the electron microscope came different types of microscope these are compound microscopy dissection microscopy then electron in electron it we have screening electron and transmission electron microscope in compound microscope we can have simple microscope phase contrast dark field fluorescent and micrometry micrometry means uh, we can measure the size of the different cells and organisms in the microscope other way to classify the microscope is uh, we can have simple or compound microscope light or electron microscope monocular or biocular microscope now comes to basics of microscopy microscope uh, works on the light and we all know light travels in a straight line but in a wave form like this as it is this figure is showing it is in the wave form light travels in a wave form in a straight line and uh, so wave has a certain properties so light has certain properties first is amplitude uh, amplitude is nothing but the farthest distance of the wave this light wave from its axis this distance is amplitude the other definition comes is a wavelength now we, have, we can define wavelength as a two successive points on a wave if we are counting from here then we have to count it till here that is wavelength if we are starting from here then all up to this it is wavelength from this point to this point okay and uh, symbol for wavelength is lambda then comes frequency uh, frequency is uh, number of waves in a one second suppose there are five waves in one second so the frequency of this light is five another wave frequency is one upon wavelength so wavelength and frequency are inversely proportional if frequency is more wavelength will be less and if uh, wavelength is more frequency will be less now refractive index uh, it is the comparison between speed of light or any wave in a vacuum means uh, zero gravity and the speed of light in a medium which we are going to test or we are testing we are comparing for the refractive index that is refractive index the example of different refractive index is uh, displayed over here air is uh, 
nearly one water is having 1.33 glass is having around 1.6 and the cedar wood that is immersion oil which we are going to use in this microscope for higher magnification is around 1.55 that is nearly equal to that of glass the other word is uh, refraction refraction is nothing but when the parallel rays of light passes from one medium to the other medium they change the direction of their travel as we can say in this figure this is traveling in a straight line but after passing from this biconvex lens they are diverged they change their direction so this change in the direction is known as refraction it may converge or it may diverge conversion other two words come conversion and diversion if light is passing from this biconvex lens the light rays are going to converge means if they are passing from lighter medium to the denser medium having higher density then they will diverge means light rays will go opposite to the axis central and if light rays is passing from denser medium to the lighter medium their direction will change to towards the axis of this medium means axis of that light so that is conversion other is focal point or uh, we can define focal point as a when this uh, parallel rays of light passes from this biconvex lens the ray, light rays will focus at a one particular point on a opposite plane this point is focal point and the distance between this focal point and the center of the lens is focal length focal length of that particular light so that is focal length other is numerical apertures numerical apertures is a mathematically uh, calculated formula for numerical aperture we need to learn about intake angle first if we look at the angle between these two farthest rays which are focusing on the focal point that is this one and this one so angle between these two farthest point that are concentrating on the focal point is intake angle and for numerical apertures na we have to take sine value of the this half intake angle between this uh, central axis and this one farthest ray so na is a refractive index into the sine value of half intake angle that is n. okay now resolution and resolving power resolution is nothing but the two point discrimination if we can differentiate between the two points so that is stands for resolution resolution is in simple way it is two point discrimination the resolution closer can be the fine dot that we can separate it out as two separate point that is resolution in maximum possible resolution is the resolving power the limit of resolution is uh, here the k stands for constant it is a ratio of wavelength of light and the na of the objective which we are using that is limit of resolution magnification here we can see the two images magnification is nothing but the degree of enlargement these two words are there useful magnification and empty magnification useful magnification is that the range of magnification magnification which shows detail clearly an empty magnification is we cannot see more detail but there will be blurring of image occur here we can see in these images the first one this three we are here we are magnifying this image so it is you uh, showing detail magnify more detail clearly still magnifying it is showing still magni uh, detail clearly but in this right side uh, we are uh, magnifying it but there is no more detail visible but there is 
blurring of image is occurring so, so that is empty magnification and this is useful magnification now abrasions there are two types of abrasions first is chromatic and second one is spherical abrasion if we want to define the chromatic abrasion when the parallel rays of light we are using the white light source and we as, as we all know white light has a combination of different colors starting from blue to red or whole rainbow combines to form one white light so when we pass this white light from this biconvex the blue the wave waves which is having blue property will converge more as compared to the red so this whole light will focus on the one plane not at a point okay so the different color will fall in this uh, in between this red and blue light so whole rainbow will be created and that is chromatic abrasions looking at spherical abrasions when this uh, whole cone of light that is focusing on this biconvex lens and there so it is, as it is uh, passing from one medium to other it will change their direction so the marginal rays which is passing from far away from this axial lens axial rays so that will converge more as compared to this axial ray so there will be a plane of light it, as it is not focusing at one particular point so it will create abrasions so our vision will not be clear that is spherical abrasion we can correct it by using different type of lenses uh, here we are correcting chromatic abrasion with uh, this concave lens and spherical abrasion by modifying the curvature of this uh, biconvex lens so the all light rays are focusing at one point and here all the different wavelength are focusing at one single point now working principle of a microscope here is the light source below then comes condenser then this is our object or specimen or we can say glass light then this is the objective here is the eyepiece and here we are looking at the microscope or in eyepiece so when the light rays passes from this condenser they focus on the object the condens function of condenser is to focus the light on object then uh, light rays passes from this object to the objective then this objective forms a real image over somewhat over here between the eyepiece and the object and we are looking in the eyepiece so eyepiece will form a virtual image in the same plane as this objective is there here it is uh, more clearly we can see here is our object light rays passing from this objective object to this objective lens and it is forming image somewhat over here between eyepiece and the objective it is real inverted and magnified as we can see it is looking like real it is bigger than this uh, real object so it is uh, magnified and it is inverted this uh, object is uh, sh showing error over this left side and it is on the right side so it is inverted then light rays passes from this uh, real inverted and magnified image that is formed by this objective lens to this eyepiece and we are looking at the object from here so this eyepiece will form image in the same plane as this object it is virtual not real virtual inverted and magnified image formed by the eyepiece so this is the principle now different parts of the microscope we can uh, divide the microscope in two major parts so depending on one then function this upper part all this upper part is a component to focus the image properly into the eyepiece in the lower part that focuses the light to the specimen upper part has different parts like eyepiece focusing nose piece objective lenses mechanical stage biocular body diopter ring and the lower part light source base brightness adjustment condenser adjustment stage adjustments diaphragm condenser and this fine and coarse adjustment knobs first of all eyepiece that is located uppermost the function of is 
eyepiece is uh, to magnify to form a magnifier and virtual image it sometimes carries a micrometer or pointer there are different types of mic eyepiece which is used in the microscope most commonly nowadays we are using compensating eyepiece there are uh, some high eye point eyepieces that helps the spectacle user and uh, avoid sweating into the lenses then comes arm it is the arm the function of arm is to support the tube and to connect it to the base then adjustment knobs there are two adjustment knobs one is fine adjustment knob other is coarse adjustment knob function of coarse adjustment knob is to focus the specimen grossly and uh, we can use fine adjustment knob for fine focusing of the specimen fine tuning to focus the uh, specimen uh, here is the biocular body that uh, carries the eyepiece and it connects the eyepiece to the objective lens base that is the main support of the microscope bottom of the microscope for support then revolving nose piece it is the revolving nose piece here it is showing the part that holds two or more objective lenses that can be rotated easily to change the power of objective we can easily change between low power high power or oil immersion lens by revolving nose piece objective lens the function of objective lens is to concentrate light rays from specimen and to focus and to form a magnified image here is the highlight of uh, one objective lens it is showing different uh, numbers and names on the on it it is showing name of manufacturer country it is the mouth thread to mount it in a revolving nose piece it is the apo it is the abbreviation abrasion correction for chromatic and it plane is indicating flat correction flat field correction it is the lateral magnification 1.4 is the numerical aperture of this uh, objective it is the oil is showing immersion medium we can use the oil that is cedar wood point here point 21 is uh, is the working distance it is that is a uh, most uh, distance between the most outer part of the objective to the specimen the color code is for magnification that is uh, it is blue color for uh, high power magnification color code here is this spring loaded retraction stopper to protect uh, the inner lenses of this uh, objective uh, 0.17 is indicating thickness maximum thickness we can use uh, for the cover slip with this objective it is showing tube length infinity it is corrected infinity tube length so all rays will be passing through here will be infinity means parallel it is the dic it is the standard there are two standard we will look after some time one is dic and other is japanese industrial uh, it is the different magnification power of lenses red is for 5x yellow is for 10x green for 20x blue for high power 50x and white for 100x oil immersion uh, there are different type of uh, objective lens common objective lens uh, there are corrected for chromatic and spherical abrasions this is apochromate this is fluorite there are different type of apochromate lens they are using different combination of lenses it is screening low power high power and oil immersion this uh, higher magnification have spring loaded retraction stopper to protect the costly lenses which is present inside the objective these are the different type of objective lens which is corrected spherically and chromatically and there is also a field curvature if it is showing plane then that means it is corrected for field curvature so there will be no spherical abrasions plane fluorite is corrected spherically for 3 to 4 color chromatically for 2 to 4 colors and it is showing plane so it is field corrected the most commonly used uh, objective is this plane 
apochromate that is corrected spherically for 3 to 4 wavelength colors chromatically for 4 to 5 colors and it is also corrected field okay magnification power of different uh, objectives screening is for ocular lens is uh, having same for all that is 10 times so total magnification will be here it is 40 multiplication of objective plus ips in low power it is uh, it is the color code screening that is 4x for red yellow blue and white for oil total magnification is multiplication of these two here it is 10 into 10 is equal to 100 14 to 10 400 into 10 thousand and it is working distance working distance is important to learn for says it will help us in focusing if we are knowing the working distance we can focus our specimen or slide very easily and speedily the principle the important thing is to learn about how the oil immersion lens or objective will work uh, in this image we can uh, divide this image in two plane one is uh, this is the central line one part is right side to it another is left side to it if we see right side to it here we had not applied any medium or oil so when the condenser which is present over below this uh, specimen will condense the light to the specimen so it is passing from air to the glass so there will be it is converging as it is passing from lighter medium to denser medium so there is conversion of light rays so it is bending towards the axis this is axis this light rays is bending it is supposed to pass like this but it is passing from air to glass so it is bending converging okay now again it is passing from glass to air so denser medium to lighter medium so it will diverge it is supposed to go like this if it is glass is continued medium is continued but it is air so it will diverge from here so this angle will be created and it will be lost through bending and if we apply the oil so there will be no bending over here it will pass straight away as the glass medium so we can focus we can concentrate this amount of light into the objective so we can use as we know in oil immersion we want maximum light for specimen to be visible so this is the principle yeah we are talking about some standards objective din first is din that is uh, 45 mm standard which is configured for 160 mm tube length other is gis japanese industrial standard that is the 36 mm standard objective that is objective length and it is corrected configured for 170 mm tube length now mechanical stage it is the mechanical stage not clearly visible but if you have microscope you can locate it easily it is uh, located just above the this stationary stage this is stationary stage that holds the specimen and mechanical stage is to easily change the our field of vision and it is uh, below this it is showing uh, adjustment screw for mechanical stage it allows the smooth x and y axis movement in two dimensions the function is to hold the slide and allow smooth x and y axis movements now condenser function of condenser is to control and focus the light on specimen there are two type of condenser first is simple condenser that is having single lens with diaphragm control other is a chromatic or a planetic it is combination of lenses and also having diaphragm and mounting thread over it here it is mounting thread to fix it with a microscope below the stage now diaphragm it is present within the condenser it controls the diameter of light beam and uh, it is used to match the na of condenser and uh, na of objective if we are using low power then there will be difference in the na between low power objective and oil immersion objective yeah it is low power it is high power and it is oil immersion 
here it is showing working distance this is specimen or slide it is working distance here it is less and it is almost nil and this is the position of diaphragm we can use for low power we have to close the diaphragm for uh, high power we have to open in midway between close and open half open half close and in oil immersion it is fully open if we compare with the field of vision which we are looking in the eyepiece so here it is showing position of diaphragm it is fully open the beam of light is quite wide objective field of vision is quite big resolution power is quite good light exposure is also good and there is very good contrast also if we look at this image uh, here we have closed the diaphragm it is ideal position we have a little bit closed diaphragm so beam of light is little bit less so exposure field of vision is little bit less here we, along with decreasing the light we are also decreasing the resolution but we are increasing the contrast in comparison to this field and we if we open the diaphragm wide then resolution will be increasing light exposure is also increased but contrast is compromised so this is the importance of diaphragm now light source it is the showing over here led white light we are using here is the brightness control we can increase or decrease the brightness of light light function is uh, to make the specimen easier to see built in illumination from both ac and dc led halogen lamp it is over mounted over here below the microscope over the base there are two type of uh, illumination for the light source we are telling um, one is critical and the other is cold now now how to focus the specimen so we should always start to observe the specimen using lowest power objective first then we have to focus it then move to higher power objective according to our need we have to use only fine adjustment knob when using highest or longest power objective keep the both high open in case of biocular microscope it will reduce our eye strain we have to keep our eyes little bit away from eyepiece so it will reduce the eyeless interference in the field of vision how to maintain the take care of microscope we always have to hand it uh, or use it with uh, two hands always we have to carry with two hands we have to be gentle as we are in micros biology be gentle cleaning should be done with uh, tissue paper and we have to take care of objective and lenses we should not use xylene like substances to clean the lens precaution have to take and dust is the enemy of the lenses so we always have to keep microscope covered when it is not in use that's it so my special thanks to dr kunjan kikani sir and also to my hod dr sanjay mehta sir thanks for watching this video hope this video will give you much more information thank you a lot